in the system of white supremacy, racism doesn't exist as far as people talking about it unless the white supremacists say that it exists. Because the victims who are the prisoners of war, the prisoners of the system of white supremacy, what they say doesn't matter about anything, whether it's about racism or anything else, unless the white supremacists, the prison masters, say it matters. Okay. Uh, some time ago, someone coined a phrase just a few years ago, black lives matter. But that doesn't mean anything unless the white supremacists say that black matter, uh, black lives matter mm-hmm. in the system of white supremacy. But I started writing the first two or three pages about 1950, uh, the latter part of 1956 and into 1957. And actually it was about maybe six pages when, when I started writing it. I didn't start out to write a book. I started out to write a little pocket guide, you might say just some papers, actually six papers, six pages that I had that I carried around. They were tattered pages after a while, and I had to keep rewriting them. And then I added a few things, and it got to be seven or eight pages and whatnot. And it was a guide for myself about what to do on a daily basis. I was in Japan at the time, and uh, I was in uniform, Air Force, at a place called Wajima Air Station. And so I was thinking seriously because I was hearing reports about what was going on in Little Rock, Arkansas, 1957, about the Central High School students, the the uh, Little Rock Nine, they called them. Yes, they did. And so I was following that, and I was thinking about the entire race problem, not just within a school context, but within the context of everything going on in the world and all areas of activity. So I was thinking about maybe immediately I thought about the race problem can probably be solved, but it's got to be solved through individual action. Yes. What individual people do each and every day, both white and non-white. Mm-hmm. If, if white people are not getting along with black people on a day-to-day basis, and having an understanding and, and looking out for each other and having not having any animosity toward each other right where they are day to day, it doesn't make any difference what any politicians or preachers or anybody else says. It's not going to work. It's that day to day thing, that everyday thing that that either makes white supremacy or it doesn't. So if white people and black people have a certain understanding with each other that is not constructive, that is hostile, but people are not being honest with each other and saying exactly what they really think and why they think it and all like that, this problem will never be solved. It'll just go on and on and on. And I'm talking about the people that you talk to if you're a non-white person walking around on this planet, the people that you do business with, the people that you interact with in a school or on a job or anywhere else in a white and non-white setting, if you are not straight up, I mean, not, I'm talking about about everything. I came to that conclusion in 1957. If you are not clear, if anybody's being hypocritical about anything, you're not going to solve the race problem ever. Not ever. Because... It all comes from people hiding what they really think. So, really, it's healthy, I say, for people to say, can I say what I really think? Just ask that question. I mean, you know, it might hurt your feelings, but can I say what I really think about you and the things you do or the way that you look or whatever? Can I say what I really think? Yes. And can you say what you really think? And until we reach that point and be willing to not only accept that, be willing to really go for it all the way, full tilt. I came to that conclusion in 1957 that this problem cannot be solved. 
So I said, I will have a code for interacting okay. with every white person that I encounter. Not only the white people, but every black person I encounter. I said, because that's the key. Have a code that you stick with. You don't deviate from it. A code of what? Thought, speech, and action. When this happens, I'll do this. When somebody says this, I will do, I will say this, this, and this. And stick with it. And try to make it as constructive as I possibly can. That, to me, is the solution. It was the solution in 1957, and it's the solution now. If that doesn't happen, we're not going to solve this problem. Having meetings and rallies and marching and all like that, if you can't get that day-to-day -day thing, that understanding on a minute by minute, day to day, in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, if you war, if you don't get an understanding in all of these, white and non white, and be totally honest with each other about everything, don't hold back anything. This problem will never, ever be solved.